The purpose of this video is to explain the various legal dimensions applicable to personal genomic sequence data. Unlike the concept the human genome, which refers to aggregated genomic sequence data of multiple persons, personal genomic sequence data refer to the genomic sequence data or raw genomic data of a particular person. It is important to differentiate personal genomic sequence data from DNA. DNA encodes and contains genomic information in the form of a sequence of nucleotides. However, the information contained in DNA is not yet in a usable format for genomics research. Only once genomic information is derived from the DNA through a sequencing process and acquires a separate existence as data stored on a computer, does it become usable for genomics research. At this stage, it becomes a distinct new legal object. As with other digital objects, such as software, digital money and electricity, personal genomic sequence data are fungible. This means that multiple copies or instances of the same personal genomic sequence data can be made. The first legal dimension that is relevant to personal genomic sequence data is personality rights. These are rights that are intended to protect one's personality. Examples are the right to dignity, to respect a person's name, reputation, and important in the context of genomic information, a person's right to privacy. We refer to a person to whom data relates as the data subject. Generally, Data subjects have the right to control data about themselves. This also applies to personal genomic sequence data. A data subject has the right to control his or her own personal genomic sequence data. Because personality rights are intended to protect one's personality, they cannot be transferred to someone else, such as a research institution or a private company. However, persons can waive their personality rights. For example, if you voluntarily publish your own personal genomic sequence data online and make it freely available for download, in other words, if you place your data in the public domain, the law will deem this as a waiver of your personality rights in this data. The second legal dimension that is relevant to personal genomic sequence data is property rights, in particular ownership. Different from personality rights, which are bound to a specific person's personality, ownership of personal genomic sequence data is not bound to the data subject, but is acquired independently. When an instance of personal genomic sequence data is generated by a sequencing laboratory, it is a new legal object that is created, and that can be acquired by the first person who intends to be the owner, and who takes effective control of the data. Note that ownership is not vested in the personal genomic sequence data in the abstract, but in a specific instance of the personal genomic sequence data. Clearly, the sequencing laboratory is in the best position to take effective control of the data. However, the acquisition of ownership can also be arranged through contract. Accordingly, University A can outsource the sequencing to Company B, but agree that ownership of the resulting personal genomic sequence data instances be acquired by University A. Importantly, ownership of a personal genomic sequence data instance is limited by the personality rights of the data subject. This means that the owner of the data can only use the data and trade with the data with the consent of the data subject. The third legal dimension that is relevant to personal genomic sequence data is intellectual property rights. We will consider two kinds of intellectual property rights that are relevant to personal genomic sequence data, namely copyright and patents. If someone creates a compilation of personal genomic sequence data, that is, a genomic data set, Copyright in such a dataset will automatically vest in such a person. Importantly, copyright vests in the dataset as a whole and not in the constituent instances of personal genomic sequence data. To use the dataset, license out its use or sell the dataset, 
the copyright holder would need the consent of two groups of people. First, the data subjects, and secondly, the owners of all the data instances. In practice, all the data instances may be owned by the same research institution that is also the copyright holder in the dataset. This will simplify matters a lot. However, because personality rights cannot be transferred, consent will always need to be obtained from the research participants, that is, the data subjects. If a gene sequence has a demonstrated functional use, it can be patented. In principle, the person who applies for such a patent does not need to have any rights in the gene sequence. However, similar to the copyright holder in a genomic dataset, the patent holder will not be able to use or commercialize the patented gene sequence without consent from both the data subject and from the owner of the gene sequence. Briefly stated, these are the various legal dimensions applicable to personal genomic sequence data and how they interact. If you want to know more, follow the links in the description below.